Coach Andrew, we're getting famous. We got really? people yelling out our names from the stands. People taking pictures with our people. People and asking people. We're getting them. dirty looks from other media people. <laughs> getting told that getting told that you have the nicest butt on the coaching staff. Hey, there you go, coach. Yeah. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Let's not bring that up at all. <laughs> you just did. We're recording. Oh shoot. Get Sports Focus is brought to you by Summit Partners, leaders in growth equity investing. Weightsandbars.com. Build your home gym and shop locally from the Bay Area's best fitness equipment experts. Ike's Love and Sandwiches. Championship level sandwiches every single time. South Bay Construction, a reputation built on trust. And by Fuel Good, fueling your success. Conveniently located in Santa Clara off Homestead Road. For more info, go to fuelgoodmealprep.com. Welcome to GSF Weekly. It is week four. No WCAL games this week, so we get to go out and explore other areas and get to know other schools and all that stuff. Uh, There's some familiar schools that are going to be playing, and we're going to be there. Try to be there at least. So, what's up, coach? You know, pumping a football that I have to give to somebody. Other than that, it's uh, got to see the last of uh, last of my athletes leaving for college, playing at the next level. Wow! Uh, so exciting, mm-hmm. exciting, exciting stuff. Um, am I winning still? You are winning. I have not put the totals down yet. I'll I'll put that out later. I didn't have time, but um, pretty sure I'm winning. You are winning. You are definitely winning. And uh, I am not doing good with my predictions. I think I need to kind of detach myself sometimes and, and not get too caught up with, you know, being a fan. You know, because, you know, I, I was going for the NorCal teams. Let's uh, let's let's dive into that, because, you know, we're going to give I'm going to give the people what they want. Oh, yeah. Oh really? Okay, here we go. Yeah, uh, they want they want me they want me unchained and they want me people want me to just say what do they say? Say how it is. And you know what? Say what you want to say, coach. I will because you know at the end of the day, I'm not a high school coach. I am a professional football coach. I am a general yep. and I have an unbiased opinion. So let's go. All right. For uh, okay, somebody asked me this. So with all the teams that you've covered so far this season, who's the best team that you've seen? Hey, LaSalle. St. John Bosco. Okay. If we're purely talking, like, okay, fine. Then I would. I, yeah. I'd agree, yeah. Then St. John Bosco. If we're talking purely Northern California, De LaSalle. Yeah, that's a close second. I yeah. still think Sarah's, Sarah's, uh, Gonna work themselves out uh, up there, but De La Salle is definitely number one in NorCal. But St. John Bosco is definitely number one in the majority of the country. They're number two right now, according to uh, the ESPN poll. So the same school that they're, it's either them or them. It's either Modern Day or St. John Bosco. But, you know, I, I do have to mention this. So what's, they were impressive on the field. But what's even more impressive is them after the game and being able to interact with some of their parents. Because we went to their their spot where they have, you know, their quote unquote locker room. And, and we interviewed uh, two to three guys from Bosco. Um, and we were just like, wow, these are really good kids. Like, they're very polite. They're I've been to that locker room when there's other teams are in there. And these guys are like, they're young professionals. It's almost like they're basically like Sarah, but a different Jersey. Like the way this team is ran is very, very similar. And, and I was really impressed with that. You know, the, the, the kids, they weren't, they were very gracious and like, it was just the interaction with the parents as well. Like, 
overall first class you know i'm thinking of going down there this friday actually for the pittsburgh uh, uh bosco game um some things are gonna have to fall into place but for now i i, I would like to go <laughs> and i already got permission from the school which is cool uh their qb baller madden baller that's number seven that's the kid that i got that touchdown right before the half so yeah, I just want to mention that if, if some of you guys are from Bosco and you're you're watching this, which I'm pretty sure you will be. Um, um, yeah, I, I, very good. Very impressed. Good luck to you. Uh, you know, way to represent. <laughs> I wasn't there, so I can't I can't say anything. Yeah. That's, that's all I got to say about Bosco. No, they seem like, they seem like, I mean, that's, that's a good thing. Like, you know, and that just speaks testament to their coaching staffs and like how they tell the kids and teach the kids like how to act on and off the field. So, you know, big kudos to, you know, that coaching staff for doing that at both schools, you know. And Can shout you out to Coach Lowe, their offensive coordinator. Those play, that play calling was just spot on. I mean, they they did their job. I mean, one play, touchdown, drives are crazy to me. And they did it like twice. 84-yard drive in like 55 seconds or less. That's crazy. Crazy. And, you know, the Padres did the best they could. But I think that that revealed a lot and... And like Coach Wall said, hey, this is this is not a losing effort. This is a learning thing. You know, we're going to learn from this and then we're going to move on. And they have a very, very tough game against SI in a couple of weeks or in, in, in about 15, 12 days. So that is going to be interesting because SI, they beat Cathedral Catholic, their offense, their defense looks good. SI's defense looks really good. So anyways, uh, who else? What else? St. Francis? Not there yet. After after seeing them against De La Salle, they're very close to Sarah, but I, I would say they're not there yet. They can get there in a couple of weeks. But remember when we did our prediction, our, our poll, our predicted standings for WCAL? Mm-hmm. So let can we can we start with that? Can we look back? Your first four. Top four in the WCAL. Do you remember? Oh, you should remember. I think I said Sarah, St. Francis, reared in. And then I think I threw my, I think I threw Midi in there. You threw Midi in there. And I, mine was the same. It was Sarah, St. Francis, reared in, and SI. Hmm. Every single team in the WCAL except for SI and Midi, lost this weekend. And who's the only undefeated team in the WCAL so far going into league? It's SI and Midi. Wait, you're re Oh, yeah, Reardon lost. Valley lost. Sacred Heart Cathedral lost. Yeah, just SI and Midi. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> well, your monarchs impressed me, coach. And shout out to Manalo for shooting flawlessly. Uh, uh, that game was shot to perfection. You know, that's how we do it here. If you want to intern for Get Sports Focus, hit me up. We got room. Um, you know, Manalo is a senior in high school and he's shooting games for us and he making that money, coach. He making that money. <laughs> is it? Is he a senior? I thought he was a junior. Oh, he's a senior. This is oh he's he's getting ready to leave high school and go pro. Holy crap! In soccer, so yeah, we, we we were very impressed with the Monarchs and uh, and just like that, like radar is now turned on. Jonah, Owen, all these guys, Lazaro. We're on a first name basis with the boys now. <laughs> good yeah could be so that's pretty much all the review yeah 
WCAL on a break this week. Let's look at everyone else that's in the Bay Area. Yeah. So we'll start with the Thursday game. Uh, is it Thursday games or this is the only Thursday game? Thursday game. Yes, this is the only Thursday game. I'm talking about the the Garlic Fest happening. It's called the Severance Bowl. Was it Severance Bowl? Severance Bowl. Severance Bowl. 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 They used to, so they used to play for a bell. But now they don't. Now it's just for bragging rights. Okay, so tell, tell us about this game and, and your prediction, Coach. So we got the uh, Christopher Gilroy game. It's going to be, I know earlier in the season, it was slated to be at Christopher. Um, it got moved to Gilroy because it's just a bigger venue, way more parking. But this is a, this is, I mean, it's a historic matchup ever since, you know, Christopher came to the city. Um, so, but it's also, it's going to be, it's going to be a lopsided game. Like, for sure. Like, if you're going to look at it from, from a talent aspect, it's pretty lopsided right now. Um, but Christopher's coming off of a really impressive win over Palo Alto. And Gilroy's been on the road and, like, on the road, like, for actually, no, they were on the road week one, and it was, like, a far game. And then I believe they were home this last week. But Gilroy's still rebuilding. You know, that coaching staff, I think this is only their second year together. So they're still trying to figure out – they're still trying to figure it out over there. Um, however, I don't think, I don't think it's going to be as – big of a blowout as people are expecting because when it's a rivalry game like this, these games will go like, you know, there it's, it's personal. They want to play it that way. They want to show that like, you know, Oh, Gilroy is known for more than just wrestling, <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be, it's going to be a tough game. You know, I, mm, <clears throat> I think, I think Gilroy will get one score. Um, and I would probably say that's going to be against, you know, whenever Christopher decides to throw in the reserves, going to call it, like I said, I'm going to call it how it is. That's when they'll score. That's where you got to be careful when you see that though, because if you get scored on, on your second team, second and third teams, you got to fix that. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you're playing. You need to fix that. So I'm calling, I think it's going to be like a 42, seven game. Hmm. Probably running clock. Probably running clock like right before the half. Oh, okay. Yeah. Probably because like, you know, there's <laughs> they usually do like these big spectacle things like at the beginning of the game and at halftime. So you're going to want a running clock or everyone's going to be there forever. Wow. Okay. Well, knowing the history, um, what, Gilroy went undefeated in 2018? Mm-hmm. And that was the last time they beat Christopher, I believe. Or mm -hmm. I don't even know if they played that year, but um, they went down after that. I don't know what happened. I think the rest yeah. of the team took all the talent and kept them away from the grass. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But uh, I, I think this is going to be a 56 to, I would say, seven game. It is going to be a running clock. I want to see every single star players from Christopher scoring a touchdown. Nothing against Gilroy. You guys got the win by with the game going to your school, by the way. That that's a big win for you. But I, I just don't see it. Christopher looks really good right now. They've bounced back from that week one loss. Uh I can see them really pouring it on and and just yeah, conquering this this team. So um they haven't scored, I don't think, Gilroy this season, which is crazy. So, so the win for them is score score something. <laughs> score something. Doesn't matter what it is. Score something. Okay, so do do we want do we want to challenge Christopher to, to pitch a shutout with over 50 points? Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're gonna get some some hate messages from Gilroy. <laughs> ah. No, I, I don't think we need to do it that way. Um, I mean, I, I guarantee you, like, Christopher is already challenging themselves to try and pitch a shutout because they could have pitched a shutout last year. They didn't. 
So, you know, that and, and that was all on that was all on uh Tyler Hodges last year. He was the reason yeah. why that, that happened. So, you know, I don't think I think Christopher's gonna try and do it again. And I don't think Christopher I don't think Gilroy's gonna let them. So challenge that nah, there, there's a challenge in itself. Yeah. And the schools are doing that on their own. So these two teams are gonna do it on their own. I just wanna see a good, clean game. I mean, it's in it's here at home, so I don't gotta go far. So I'm happy. Let's just let's just all get out of there healthy, right? Yes, yeah. Get out of this one healthy, both teams. Yeah, both teams. All right. Good luck to you guys. Uh, we'll see you Thursday. Next game, big one in Bellflower, Pittsburgh, driving all the way down to St. John Bosco. This is gonna be St. John Bosco's second home game. They beat uh they beat up on some team. I don't even know who they beat up in that first first week. Some team from like Texas or something. Um, but they've been on a roll. Uh we saw them against Sarah. They are as advertised people. They got players galore, talents all over the place, quality coaching. That stadium is beautiful. Uh, it's gonna be a treat for Pitt to to go to a different environment. I know Pitt is like crazy rowdy and scary sometimes because of just just how that 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 stadium is just like. <laughs> but I don't know. I I think Pittsburgh's got a shot at this. If uh, if they're gonna prove something, this is this is the opportunity to do it. Um, they have Jamar Searcy. I think he's, I think right now he's the best player I've seen in the Bay Area. Uh, I, I would, if we were doing, which we are going to do, a, a a watch list for players of the year, Jamar Searcy is right up there. Uh, they're undefeated. Uh, they have a magician under center, Marley Alcantara. He's 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 a nephew. He's he's my Pinoy nephew. <laughs> Our Pinoy nephew. Um, they got Juju Walls. They have the line. They're loaded with young talent. The only thing I'm worried about is the size difference because <laughs> Bosco's got some big boys. <laughs> big boys that can move. So, But anything is possible, Pitt. Anything is possible. I know Coach Ramirez is going to get the boys uh, prepared. But... Um, if I want to be right, I would say Bosco will put up 40 on them. But if I want to go with my gut feeling, coach, I got to root for the NorCal upset. I want I, I want to I think this is going to be a national news. I think Pitt is going to go down there, they're going to win and they're going to take over that number 1 spot. <laughs> so my prediction is Pitt's going to win. You don't even want to throw a score on that. I I would say it's going to be like a forty nine to forty two game. Hmm. Sarah kind of gave them a little bit of an idea on how to keep up with Bosco. If any, that's what Sarah did for the rest of the schedule. They kind of exposed just enough to the rest of the schedule, Bosco schedule. As far as like what to do and what can work. You asked me last night, was it as bad as it, as it looked like? It? Yes and no. Sarah did some really, really good things. But the thing that, that really got Sarah was the turnovers. That's it. Self-inflicted. Uh, yes, but the turnovers were earned. Like, you know, they... The coverage, the defensive coverage was just there's mismatch. Like, yeah. So they had opportunities. They had they had enough opportunities, and that fifty that 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 drive right before the half, that really that that was a knockout punch that that Sarah couldn't really rebound from, and you could tell mentally they were like you know, shocked. And um, even though they were okay still, it was just not going to happen. So yeah. anyways, yeah, that, that's that's kind of like 
what happened there. I think Pitt's got a chance. So bring that intensity, bring that heat. You know, let's go Marley. Let's go Jamar. All those guys. They got a young kid named Kenny Ward who is going to be a superstar. Oh, my goodness. This guy's got speed, coach. Yeah. That's all I got to say. I'm, I'm rooting for North Cal on this. I know. I know you are. But, you know, I, I got to, again, say it how it is. I mean, still, I mean, the gap between NorCal football and especially like the powerhouses of, you know, that Trinity League, it's still very, I don't think it's it's closing, but not as quickly as people think it is. Um, yeah, I do I think Pittsburgh probably has a really good chance to make some noise in the game? Yes, absolutely. With the amount of people that they got there, they're physical, they play well. You know, they're coached very well. Yes, they will put up a fight in this game. It'll probably be closer than what happened with Sarah versus Bosco, though. Bosco's still going to end up winning this game. You know, I'd say probably they'll probably score one more than Sarah did. So I'm going to say probably like a 42-21 game. I think that's what the score was, right? Okay, so maybe 24. <laughs> I don't know. But it's going to be one. Oh, their game, it was 56 to like something. Oh. 19. Then I'd say probably around there. 49, 49-21, but it's going to be Bosco. Like, especially with those like those one-play scores and just how quickly they can score and how efficiently they can score. You know, Pittsburgh just got to be ready for it. Like I said, like I think they have – they have a really good chance to put up a good fight. Um, but, you know, I got to give it to Bosco no matter what right now. Top two team in the country. Says uh, says enough right there. What was your score again? I'm writing this down so I don't have to. Uh... 49-21. 49-21. Bosco. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, two teams that we haven't seen yet. And that is Bishop O'Dowd and Cardinal Newman. I don't know much about Cardinal Newman. I do know O'Dowd just because of um, – and got to see, like, what kind of talent comes out of O'Dowd because of the, the All-Star game. And I know O'Dowd always has, like, you know, some studs. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I know they played well against Mac. I mean, they won – they beat Monta Vista, you know, so I think O'Dowd's gonna just keep rolling, um, but again, I, I don't know much about Carlton Newman. I think I don't know any players mainly, but I do know like they have a very like high efficiency like offense. They like to score. They like to score a lot. Um, they can put points up. So um, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know too much about them, but I mean. I'll go with what you say, you know, Cardinal Newman. Sounds good. I mean, yeah, I'll go Cardinal Newman just because, just like, they're undefeated right now and they played against some good teams. So I'm going to go Cardinal Newman, you know, probably say, like, 35-28. Okay. Okay. 35-28. Um... Yeah, new uh, Cardinal Newman is just th their schedule is a lot, um, a lot more, a lot harder than than Bishop O'Dowd. Uh, Bishop O'Dowd's biggest win was against uh, Monta Vista, and um, they have they have a uh, they have some good guys on defense. Uh, I think John John Teddy or John Joe Tetty, he had a. Uh, he had a pick six against McClymans, but McClymans, they the way they won is that like they they ran the ball. All their touchdowns were rushing touchdowns, and that's what Cardinal Newman does. And Cardinal Newman's got depth. So this is gonna be a uh, um I would call it for the Cardinals, um 42-21. That's my score. And um, yeah, hopefully we can get to that game. I think Kevin is uh scheduled to go to that game, but they're just they're just going to run the ball. <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to be a quick game. Uh, this one's a good one. It's going to be in Oakland, San Ramon Valley, going to McClymans. 
That's All I gotta say is Marco Jones. Marco Jones. Um, I'm blanking out on the QB for uh, San Ramon, but um, this is like McClyman's versus St. Francis from a couple of weeks back. McClyman's almost came back to beat St. Francis, but I don't think St. Francis, I, I don't think San Ramon, it, it, I think San Ramon is a little bit, is, eh. yeah, it's tough. I'm going to go with Mac on this. They're at home. And um, if they stick with what they can do, I think they can they can outlast San Ramon Valley. Okay. Yeah, I mean, San Ramon Valley, like, you know, I like I said, like, you know, there's, uh, there's a rich history there. Like, you know, I've seen a lot of these kids, like, come in and out of San Ramon Valley, like, um, with the place that I used to work at. So I, I know what San Ramon Valley is capable of doing. We do know how physical McClyman's is. But, you know, East Bay, East Bay is built different. Like, this is a good matchup. I think this is probably what, this is a really, really good matchup. Um, I'd say it's going to come down to, like, you know, who can outlast the other, depending on what it is. Um, if, if Max sticks to what it is, like, you know, being physical, running all the time, like, you know, San Ramon, like, you know, it might just tire them out. Yeah, you know, I, McClyman's has like you know they've been very impressive seeing like you know what what's been covered with them. They're super impressive, um, but I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the Wolves. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Wolves. I'm gonna go SRV. I'm gonna say probably I'm gonna I'm gonna go 28-27. There's gonna be a missed extra point. I'll go 28-14. You want to go Mac House? Yeah, I'm going to go with Mac House. I'm trying to look something yeah. here. Um, and this computer is not cooperating. Anyways, yeah. Um, I'd like... Uh, McClyman's, they have a... They're running back. Sharky. Is it Sharky? Sharky. Shaki Tamale. I think that's his name. I got to double check. <laughs> I should know this. Off, I should know this already because we already saw. But he is a beast of a runner. Sharky Tamale. Love that name. Confirmed. <laughs> I just needed to make sure. Uh, yeah, he's... he's. Um... Whether you're looking for sports side... Or upper deck. Shh. Max preps. Max preps. <laughs> terrible. Very useful, but terrible website. Too slow. Too many things going on. Anyways, no, we love you, Max preps. Uh, because you're the only one. <laughs> De La Salle, St. Mary's. Need I say more? No, this is going to be a running, running clock. All Spartans. Third teamers get ready to play. St. Mary's is not as good as they were uh, as far as going against the De La Salle team. So I think this is going to be a 56 14 game. Um, did I give my score for the. I did, right? The yeah, yeah, you Falcons? did. I did, yeah. I did 28 14. Yeah. So next game is St. Mary's hosting De La Salle. No. No. Sorry. Yeah, um, I'm just I'm right there with you. Um, they let us out all the way. Yeah, are we gonna say yeah? Running clock by the third. Yeah, it's like maybe even sooner. So this is almost like a bye week for Dallas out before they go to London. Um, yeah. So I, I, it, first of all, I, before we move on, I do have to give a shout out to the bounce house to Mister uh, George Washington. George Washington from the Bounce House, De La Salle's student section. Outstanding gentleman. Very, very, uh, I can't even think of a, a nice word to describe the these young people. Uh, they were very uh, into what they were doing and 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 love interacting with, with, with kids, man, when I'm at these games. 
and um they were they were really cool came up to me and said hey you picked against us I was like yes i did they were like what do you think and instead of getting in my face and be like eh, 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 they were actually really nice about it <laughs> you know and and i know one of them's name is james and then the other one's paul i forgot the other one because i was stuck to like you know calling him alexander hamilton because he he had the whole look of uh George Alexander. Washington. I, well, he said he was George Washington. I was calling. I was calling him Alexander Wash. Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> they had the whole patriotic thing theme going on. But yeah, if you're out there in games and you see us, say what's up. I had a bunch of those uh, this past weekend, and it was fun. You know, all these kids yelling, "Get sports focus." What's up? Yeah. So, um, I was supposed to go to this game. But I got taken off schedule and re redirected to a different game. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be there, but you guys got this. You don't need me there to win. <laughs> <laughs> so we just say 56 to 14. 56 to 14, De La Salle Spartans. Yeah, 40, I'd say 49, 7. Running clock. They're really good. Yeah. They're really good. That I mean, the Maris is good too, but I think this is going to be a not very close game. Yeah, not at all. All right, moving on, moving on. We got a good one in the peninsula, Coach. Menlo School, the Knights. And I've been talking about Cappuccino since they won that 7-on-7 seven -seven tournament in Palo Alto. Bobby Gomez and crew hosting the Knights. 3-0 versus 3-0. Um, let's see. Uh, Menlo, Menlo School's offense is just crazy good. I believe Mike Hill is their coach, their OC. They score a lot of points. And I'm not sure if Cappuccino is going to be able to stop that. So I'm a little worried there. But what do you think, coach? So got to see Menlo, you know, last year, you know, they played against Christopher in the playoffs and, you know, they can score and they can score very quickly. Um, very, very fast scoring team. So I'd say the, I say the task that, you know, cap has to do is like, they just got to try to slow that down. Like if you can't slow down that offense, like they'll just keep, they'll just go, they'll, they'll, yeah. they'll get going. But that's not to say, like, you know, like, you know, if it's the same thing as it was last year, you know, if you stop that and you have to make their defense go to work, you know, that's where you can kind of you can kind of get back at Menlo a little bit. Right. So they try to they'll they'll do exactly everything they need to do. Just get the ball back into their their offense's hands um, as they should. But if Cappuccino can, like, you know, keep that team on the – keep their defense on the field so that their offense stays off, I, I think Cappuccino's got a chance to win that game. So it's just going to kind of – it's going to come down to, like, you know, who, how, how they control the ball. Like, you know, it's all going to be about, like, ball control, you know, time of possession. That's going to be the key to this game. Um, but I'm going to go with – I'm going to go with Menlo, though. Um, Coach Mike Hill, a lot of respect for him. Great offense. Great offensive mind. Um, I'm going to go Menlo school. Probably I'm going to go 35, probably 35, 21. I think cap can battle back. No, prove me wrong. Cappuccino and Bobby Gomez. The, you know, the, the, the outcome of this game, at least something that will set the tone is whoever wins the coin toss. Yep. Because I do believe if for any reason like Menlo ends up with the ball, this could be like a long day for long night for Cappuccino. But we'll see. I, I, the defense they got the, the Cappuccino defense. They need to. They really need to um, step up and, and make some stops. I think if they stop uh, Menlo and frustrate Menlo. Uh, the D, their their Menlo's offense. If they if they frustrate those guys, I think they can they can steal this one. But I do think they are not as battle tested. Uh, I'm talking about Cappuccino, um, but they they're well rested, and that could be a really really good thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm picking I'm picking Bobby Gomez and Cappuccino to uh take this one 
steal it. It's going to be a close game. Um, score wise, I would say 28 to 24. There you go. Let me write that down. <laughs> yeah, you can write that one down. That's a good one. 28. And it is highly likely that I'm going to be at that game. So we'll see. All right. Sacred Heart Prep and the King's Academy coach is what's next. Uh, this is a pretty pretty interesting matchup. They, they've only played each other, I believe, three times in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And the Gators, they have a... Uh, a streak going three times in the last 10 years. You'd think that they'd be, they would have a, a lot more than that. But so second half prep, they lost a close one last weekend against um, half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay is on a roll. Congratulations to their coaching staff um, and Connor Heath for winning the special teams player of the week. He scored a two point conversion to beat uh, the Gators on the road too. So at the swamp, uh, this is not going to be at the swamp. There's going to be in Sunnyvale, which is a beautiful, nice little stadium, like right there in the armpit of Sunnyvale. It's like a different world when you go there, <laughs> like the, 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 the stadium and all that. It feels like you're in the Midwest. That's what I like about the King's Academy. Um, they're heavily into analytics from what I heard. So they're probably computing everything out to see how they can beat uh, Sacred Heart uh, prep. Um, but what do you think, Coach? I mean. You got I mean, a one and two team versus a uh, one and one team. You know, I've, I've come to learn that, like, records don't really mean anything. It's like, you know, any given day something can happen. And. You know, with, you know, Sacred Heart Cathedral, like we were having against Sacred Heart Prep, I was like, well, there you go. And, you know, Kings played, what, Stag? Right before their, this bye week. And yeah. Stag's, Stag's a tough team. Stag's a very physical team for them, you know. That's different for them to play a team like that. And to come in and, you know, dominate and win, like I think Kings is going to come back and I think they're going to win this game. And I think they're going to win it a lot bigger than people think. So I'm going to go Kings Academy. I'm going to go 28-7 Kings Academy. TKA, Sunnyvale. I'm doing 14-7 Gators. I think I already said that, but that's my that's my prediction. 14-7, let's go Gators. Liberty. Against Amador Valley. Uh, it's going to be at Amador Valley. So you don't have to worry too much about the traffic. You just got to get through that Livermore exit and and you're there. But Liberty was my pick when they played Los Gatos and they disappointed me. We all know how that turned out. I watched a few uh, Amador highlights online and this Cuban, they have Tristan Tia. He's good. He's an athlete. He plays three sports. Uh, he's a three-star athlete on 24 seven. Uh, he's basically their offense. Like he, 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 he's got like, let's see, I have some notes here. Uh, he's got like seven touchdowns. Jeez. Yeah. Four on the, four in the air, three on the ground, something like that. Uh, so they're going to need to stop him because he is the guy. Um, what do you think, Coach? I mean, I haven't heard from like I haven't heard Amador Valley in a long time. It's been a while since I've heard like you know they're they're, they're consistent. They're consistent. I I think maybe it's just because like I just don't think we've really covered them a lot. No, but that's why. Um, but I mean, you saw what happened with Los Gatos. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, again, I don't know much. I'm going off of like, you know, I have to go research and read. And honestly, like, yeah, you know, you're right. Like, you know, if 
Amador Valley. And if this QB is the baller that, you know, you, you're saying he is, and, you know, he's three starred and he's just an athlete, then just let him cook. If he cooks, he might win this. He, he could probably win this whole thing. And if he's a leader, he'll probably he'll, he'll navigate the whole thing. Um, but I think it's going to be close. So I'll call a close game. I want to say like a 28-24 game. 28-24, okay. Yeah, Amador. Because I want to see this kid put the team on his back. Yeah. Um, my my prediction, I'll say it right now, it's 35-21. Uh, if Amador plays to their potential and, and be consistent, which is what they seem to be doing, uh, I think, yeah, they can, they can take this victory. Liberty played... A couple of good teams. Uh, the only good team that Liberty played so far is the Legados. And, uh, you know, they, they didn't win that game. But the other two teams, they're not very good. So I would say, hmm, yeah, Amador Valley is a lot more polished, even though they're one and two. They went up against some uh, some tougher opponents. And, um, yeah, I think they can they can get this done. Um, this would be a fun game to cover if – I'm able to go to that one instead. So we'll see. Maybe I'll post a list. Like, which game should I go to like Ethan does? <laughs> I would love to see them play, but, you know, there's also Menlo and Cappuccino. Uh, so we'll see. All right. We got a San Jose. This is not really a rivalry, but it's kind of uh, Lincoln. San Jose versus Leland. Two and one versus two and one. Um, you want to go first, coach? I mean, I made that mistake when there was a kid on the team with the last name of Phillips and picked against them, and <laughs> I, I completely am embarrassed about that. So I'm not gonna pick against Lincoln this time. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Lincoln. Um, how do we say his name again? Hmm? How do we say his name? I don't want to butcher it. I'm gonna butcher it. Oh. Kyan. Yeah. He's he's a stud. Like, he's a stud, you know. And they the thing is, like, you know, his brother, you know, watching his brother Tayden, and then, you know, I didn't even know that Kyan was on the team at that time. <laughs> um, But if he's any much as bit as if he's matured a lot, it sounds like he's matured a lot. I watched that interview with him. He's matured a lot. And, you know, if they look to him as a leader, like, you know, that's what they did with his brother. And He'll he he'll carry everyone up with him, you know, and I think that's going to be the key to this game. Um, but I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna go with Lincoln, and I think it's going to be. I want three. I want three tugs from Phillips. Three tugs. Well, mm -hmm. I think I think right now he's got five like five touchdowns over uh, like around four and thirty yards as far as all purpose yards. So he's balling. He's balling, coach. Um, Leland, they had a forfeit, and that could be a good thing or a bad thing. They beat Pioneer in week two, which was a great win for them, but they lost to Lee, I believe, in week one. So they're, they're, it seems like they're still trying to figure it out, but the forfeit is either going to keep them stale or make them hungry. And since they're playing at home, I'm assuming that they're going to be very, very hungry for this win. Uh, you know, we got a couple of uh, GSF guys there, Caden, Caden White um, and Graham Carpell, linemen. So those are seniors. Uh, Marcos, um, Wyatt, uh, Wyatt Marcos, Marcos Wyatt. He was our defensive player of the week last week. Um it's going to be cool to see him go against uh, Phillips. And um, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I, I know that Lincoln is probably a little bit more explosive than, than Leland when it comes to skilled guys. I mean, I could be wrong, but uh, Jonathan Medina, he's, uh, he's the other baller on Lincoln's squad. And him and Phillips, I mean, they, they really complement each other. And so I, I'm going to go with Lincoln. Um, gonna be a twenty-one seventeen game, 
And I think this is going to be mostly in the second half uh, for these guys. Okay. I didn't give a score, so I'm going to say 21-14 Lions. Lincoln. 21-14 Lions. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um. All right. Last game on schedule, Saturday showdown in the South Bay. We got Jason Harrison, two-time GSF All-Star Game champion versus <laughs> Joel Cordero. Hungry for his first win. Oh, Grove struggling, coach. They haven't scored a, a touchdown this week, this year, and uh, I, I think we're going to see one this this Saturday. So <laughs> I'm torn, man. I don't know who to pick, but I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Coach Harrison and the Oak Grove guys. They're going to have to make they're going to have to prove me wrong. I'm picking Jason Harrison and his Gunderson boys. Twenty one to fourteen. Oh, okay. You're going with Old Grove. Cool. All right. Cool. One and one. <laughs> <laughs> only because uh, only because Jason beat me in the All Star game last year. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. No, but Old Grove. I think they're like the thing with them is like they're gonna. They have it. It's just you know you. You just gotta put it together. Like that's where they're at. It's like they have everything that you need to be a very good team. You just got to put it together and you got to stop like, you know, self-inflicting like these mistakes upon yourself. That's the biggest thing. Um, so you eliminate those mistakes. I mean, granted, mistakes will happen, but you don't make like them repeatedly. They'll come out with a win on this one. And if they do eliminate all that, they'll win this big Mm. I'm going to go, sorry, Jason. I'm going to go 35-7 Oak Grove. Wow. I love you, Jason. Don't hate me. Did I give my score? Yeah, 21-14. 21-14. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be there for sure. So I think Coach Andrew is going to be there too. I'm volunteering him right now. <laughs> it's a Saturday I'll, game. I'll bring a. I'll bring a. I'll bring some lechon. How about that? Hey, there you go. So that's it, people. That's 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 week four. Those are the games that we we just predicted. Good luck. Make us proud. If we picked you, prove us wrong. If we didn't pick you, simple as that. Um, all right, bonus segment, coach. Anything you want to talk about as far as what is on your mind? Hmm. I know we were talking about something earlier. I can't remember what it was. It was pretty important. Oh. Okay. We all watch pro sports. <laughs> yes, we do. And I don't think even, you know, professional players are, you know, exempt from this. And it's really about, like, preparation, you know, before your season starts, right? It's really about, like, really trying to understand, like, it's not, like, you don't just have to, like, you know, oh, I got to go do all these passing things with my friends. I got to go to all these 7 on 7 tournaments. There's a, there's a whole mess of things that, like, have to go into it. Like, those are part of it. But if your body isn't ready to play, which ha can be shown with, like, you know, some of the games that you, you watch, like, that we've seen, too. Like, you can see that, like, some of these teams that, like, you know, we're, we were expecting them to make some noise in the early weeks came up short. And... Niners. Huh? Niners. <laughs> oh, yeah. There, there you go. Yeah, thanks. No, but it's true. You know, like you can tell, like, you know, if, if your body's not up to game speed and your body's not like conditioned for that, like you can see it happen. You know, yeah. I yeah. was watching the Niner game and obviously, like, you know, being a Niner fan, I had a lot of people saying, like, you know, oh, how do you feel like they lost? And then me being analytical about it, so I like, well, watch this. 
And I wasn't mad about it, but it's also like, it's blatantly true. You know, it's the same thing. Like, you know, when I go back for the Panthers, like, you know, in the, in the next seasons, it's like, you have to like, you have to kind of assume that these guys are training and you have kind of have to assume people are getting ready. This is the same thing for you high school players too. Your coaches are honestly just assuming that you are doing something. And sometimes like, you know, there's always a lot of people say like, you know, Oh, you have to rely on the high school strength conditioning program that you guys are doing like, or the conditioning that you guys are doing at your school. Sometimes it's a lot. Sometimes it's not because also at that time, like just based on like how the rules are set in the state, you guys can only have so much contact during that period anyway. So like, I think you guys can only be together for like maybe like an hour, hour and a half at most. So it's like, what are you doing on top of that? Which is why a lot of other people like, you know, they'll train outside, even some of the top schools, like, cause they have to follow the same rules. So everyone thinks like, you know, Oh, but the private schools, like, you know, they get all this, this, and this, like during that time, they don't, they have to follow the same exact rules as, as every other school does too. So they maybe only get contact for an hour, hour and a half. And these guys go and they train more because they know that they're only getting this limited time. Matter of fact, most of those players are also multi-sport athletes. So what are, what are they doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you're falling apart now, <laughs> that's a bad sign. And that means you didn't, you didn't do what you were supposed to do during this off season. Mm. That's on my mind. Only, only honestly, because I saw it in, in the pro games in the Niner game and I was pissed. Wait, who are you talking about? No, I'm not going to say his name. I still love these guys. Well, I'm assuming you're talking about the guys that didn't really show up for preseason. <laughs> that was a frustrating game. Hey, I, okay, I, I, I've been I've been trying to learn more about the Niners. I'm not really a Niners fans prior to this, but since they invited me to do some food tasting and all that stuff, I felt like maybe I should get to know this team a little bit more. I thought they were going to pull it off yesterday, but they just fell short. I didn't see the sense of urgency, like, you know, I mean, they were supposed to be the better team, right? I thought they were going to roll this team, but for some reason, like they, they couldn't that long touchdown to Jefferson. Oh my God. I didn't even think that was possible in the pros. Those happen. But that was insanely like Donald was like in his end zone when he threw that, I think. Close to it. That was that was that was a really really. It was amazing to see, and uh, yeah. I I think that game was gonna be worse than what the outcome was had it not been for the 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 fumble. Fred Warner, right? He he forced the fumble right at the goal line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank goodness Fred is on the team. <laughs> Because that, that game would have been out of hand, like, quickly. He had an interception, too, earlier. So, and then that throw to Debo, they were at the goal line, or they were, like, close to the goal line, and, and what was that? Coach? What was that? The end almost picked it off. I know. And, you know, it wasn't even just, like, the Niner game. Like, I, I have red zone. So, like, I watch – like, I'll, I'll watch the Niners, but I do like – I like watching good football, yeah. you know. And That's good football. It, so, you can – and this is, like, everywhere, you know. And, like I said, professional football players aren't exempt from it either. You know, this is why, like, you know, they have to invest a lot into their bodies. But then it's also, like, you know, if you're not there, it does the same thing. So, it's, like – Go when you need to. Like, if you guys are looking and aspiring to play at the highest level that you want to play, watch their videos of training, like, on YouTube. Because what you'll see is these guys are doing – they'll go to their organized team activities because that's how you build team camaraderie and team chemistry. And then these guys are, like, training outside. Like, they train outside of it because they know they got to get ready. Yeah. So preparation is key. 
You know? hey, how about the Raiders, though? Shoo. Avante Adams. He had one of those performances. Oh, yeah. That that toe drag. Yeah. Watch. Just, just amazing. Um, I think the one game that I screamed the most at, though, was the Bengals-Kansas City game. Mm. They got lucky. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's rigged. Freaking Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift. Are you a Swifty? I'm a Swifty, man. No, I'm not really much. I'm not like a Swifty. I don't like Taylor Swift. I like her music. I think she's very talented. Yeah. Uh, you know. But it was just like at the times that they needed these penalties, it was like it conveniently came. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Something's going on. Anyways, yeah, the Niners, they just kind of dropped the ball on that, literally, and they just couldn't finish. So hopefully they'll bounce back and win the rest of the schedule. Uh, they will. And I think – For the Niners to go to the Super Bowl. But always. You can't even beat Minnesota in game two in week two. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, that's like saying – it's like being – They don't like, have Christian. They don't have Christian. They don't have Christian McCaffrey right yeah. now. Everyone's still, everyone's still trying to like that was showing up late. They're still trying to like fold in. So I'm I'm not worried. Those sacks, coach. They really hurt. They do. Which side did that come from? Like... Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> come on now. It's fine. He lives near me. I don't want him to come and get Some me. Some guys are still in preseason mode, I guess. <laughs> Probably. And that's also what, like, a lot of people, like, don't know either is, like, you know, this is a long, drawn-out season for them. I mean, high school, you guys only play 10 games, 14 if you make it past. But, you know, especially at the pro level, it's, like, you use the first, like, five games to kind of, like, get it together. Yeah. Stimulus is different. Strain is different. So, get it together. They'll be fine. Hey, I came across this post. It was about Bo Jackson. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to find it. But it was one of those Instagram posts where it's like a carousel. You know, you have like multiple pictures with quotes. And according to this post, which I think it's true, because I did see the documentary a long time ago. Bo Jackson was quoted. He said he, said he never went to the weight room because he thought the weight room was for wussies. And he played football, and then he went to baseball uh, after that. Like, he, he was like, he was so busy playing sports that he didn't have time to go to the weight room. But you see how jacked he looked when he was playing, right? Um, he went to Auburn, right? He went to, he got, won the Heisman. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another thing there that says he taught himself how to pole vault couple of days before the meet and ended up winning the meet <laughs> for uh, for his school sometimes people got the genetics yes exactly that's so what but it doesn't mean that you can't develop and get better so Bo, Bo is Bo. yeah there will never because be another... Bo jackson he is one of the greatest to ever do it uh I think never, be, met... never be Bo, Bo or dion coach Bo or dion Bo. Well, yeah, yeah. Did you see the Colorado State Colorado game? Yeah, that was a statement. They needed that. They needed to win that game, and they needed to win that game the way that they did. They did, yeah. Travis Hunter, amazing. Yeah. But it looks like the next time, the two times that we cover or we do GSF weekly, I will be across the pond. Yes, Coach uh, Coach Andrews going to. I'm going to London. Yeah. Well, we'll see. That's next one? Next week? I leave Sunday. You leave Sunday. Okay, so... Well, the games are set. We can do it before you leave, Coach. Because all those teams are not playing anyway. <laughs> True. <They have> a... <laughs> Maybe we'll pre-record, get it out there on Monday, and, and, and let Coach Andrew enjoy his vacation. How long are you going to be there? I'll be there for two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks. Wow, that's a long vacation. 
Very nice. Very nice. You going to go to the Dale South game? I think it falls on the day that I come back. Oh, never mind. Maybe. No. What day is it? They're not playing this weekend. They're playing next weekend. What day? Uh, Thursday, maybe. Thursday here, but Friday over there. Oh, so then maybe. I'll Some, see. Yeah. If, it, if if I can, then I will. Maybe I'll reach out to the De La Salle coach and say, like, hey, can I come? Yeah. Hey, shout out to all the people that are watching this. You know, I've been coming across a lot of people personally, like in person, coming up to me saying, hey, you know, you guys do a great job. Really appreciate that. Uh, we're going to try to be better every single week. Uh, the predictions are pretty much set. We do that every week during the football season. But we're going to try to get into other subjects, like like talking about some of the pro teams in the Bay Area, uh, give you guys some tips on how to work out and how to eat healthy and how to have a better lifestyle and all that stuff. But if you have any ideas, let us know. Just DM Get, get Sports Focus on social media, and, and we'll try to work it out. We love doing this thing. Uh, it's something that we we want to grow and we want to – you know, we want audience participation, but I really appreciate everybody uh, really complimenting us and what we're doing. Uh, we're not trying to be stars or anything. We're just doing this on our own and um, talking about the things that we love and we're passionate about. And we we're a big fan of Bay Area football, the WCL football. And so, yeah, thank you for supporting us. Mm -hmm. Big so, shout out to, uh, I'll shout out to Irene and Bob. Hey, I want to meet them one of these days. Maybe we'll catch them at one of the games. Maybe we should have them on since they're, they're they 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 want to get their two cents in when when it comes to these predictions. Yeah, <laughs> that might be fun. <laughs> Shout out to uh to the Rage Cage, some of the individuals from the Rage Cage and the Bounce House, and obviously the Sarah Padres JV and freshman team that was at the game. Uh, it was cool to see them there. And uh, let's see, who else? Well, there's a lot of people. So I don't know, Coach. I think uh, I think we're heading the right direction. Where's I think so, too. Oh, word. <laughs> All right, that's GSF Weekly. I'm Alpha Volkeen. That's Coach Andrew. We'll see you at this uh, at somewhere. <laughs> Sideline somewhere.